Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. I'm Emanuel, I'm a Boeing 737 pilot and welcome to my new series about memory items for the Boeing 737 next generation aircraft. Note that the series is not designed as a training tool for real aviation, but simply as an aid to flight simmers using the PMDG 737 or other 737 simulations in the various flight simulators for desktop purposes. So in this series we're going to talk about memory items. What are they good for? Why do we have them? And finally we'll have a look at an example what they look like in the quick reference handbook but also at another example that may not be too obvious for everyone because there are more functions for which people might think there are memory items while there are actually not. So, memory items. What are they? Why do we need them? Memory items are steps from non-normal checklists that are directed by memory because the time available in case an emergency happens is too short for the pilots to dig out the quick reference handbook and start reading the checklist from the pages. So, an example for that could, for example, be a rapid decompression where the very first step is to put on the oxygen mask. And that is a step which cannot be delayed and therefore putting on the oxygen mask is an example for a memory item. Memory items are structured as part of the quick reference handbook and every 737NG pilot needs to know them by heart. So let's quickly have a look at what such a checklist would look like. Here we have the engine fire severe damage separation non-normal checklist from the um, Boeing 737QRH. And you will notice that there is a line right at the bottom, the dashed line. That is the line indicating where the memory items end. So all the steps above that have to be known by heart by both pilots flying the 737. Any checklist that contains memory items will have this very line to indicate that the memory items stop at that position. So how would you actually run the memory items then? Let's say the pilot uh, monitoring calls out engine fire. Then the pilot flying would respond, okay, engine fire memory items, my radios. And then the pilot monitoring would start. Auto throttle, if engaged, disengage. Thrust lever, engine number one or two, confirm, close. Engine start lever, engine number one or two, confirm, cut off. Engine fire switch, engine number one or two, confirm, pull. To manually unlock the engine fire switch, press the override and pull. If the engine fire switch or engine overheat light stays illuminated, and then you would evaluate if that is the case or not. If not, engine fire memory items complete. If it is still illuminated, engine fire switch, rotate to the stop and hold for one second. If, after 30 seconds, the engine fire switch or engine overheat light stays illuminated, engine fire switch, rotate to the other stop and hold for one second. Engine fire memory items complete. Once the flight conditions allow, the pilot flying is then going to call for the non-normal checklist. And when the non-normal checklist is started, you would first of all read through the memory items again. And thereafter, since you can see it says continued on next page at the bottom of the checklist, would we'll then go to the next page and do the items that are not part of the memory items. And this is how you are using your memory items and how you are reading them out to the other pilot. Reading them out however, means reading from the memory, not from the checklist in this case. The rest of the items in a checklist is called reference items. So everything we see on page number two in here is reference items, while everything you see above the line on page number one here is called memory items. Now, let's quickly have a look at an example for a checklist that does not contain any memory items, which may surprise some of you. And that is this one, the engine failure or shutdown non-normal checklist. If we look through the checklist, page 1, page 2, you will see that there is no dashed line be beneath any items. And that is because 
a normal engine failure, as in not an engine fire, not a severe damage, not a separation of the engine from the aircraft. That is simply not as urgent enough that memory items would be needed, because Boeing correctly figured out the airplane flies perfectly fine on one engine, so in case a normal engine failure happens, we're going to give the pilot time to get out the checklist and do everything from the checklist. Knowing your memory items is important for flying the 737 in real life most certainly, but even in the flight simulator in case you are using the service-based failures in the PMDG 737 or if you're using any other kind of failures in any other 737 simulation you have available for your desktop simulator. This shall conclude our intro and I hope that you found this interesting. Stay tuned for the whole series. I'm going to cover all the memory items we have available for the 737NG in the coming weeks. Thank you very much for joining. I wish you all a great day and looking forward to see you in this series.